Hi, this is Phil, Dirty Drive Away. Welcome back to a, uh, another part of this uh, series. Uh, if you've watched any of my previous um, videos, uh, you will see that I'm doing a complete breakdown, strip down of my washer. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, I've got a new engine going in, frames being repowder coated. My previous video that I've done showed the, um, the strip down of the, uh, the gearbox, which is just there. And I'll do the rebuild in another video but today we're going to be doing a strip down of the uh, the pump now this is a this is a massive uh, interpump W3523 um, pump <clears throat> it's a uh, it's really big um, it's a 350 bar pump 23 litres a minute um, but for the sake of my machine um, to get maximum power uh, they've basically limited it to 250 bar, but it is capable of 350. So it is a big pump. It's really, really heavy. Uh, I've got it, um, I've got it held up in the vise here quite well. Uh, and you'll find if you're taking your uh, your gearbox and your pumps apart, you'll find that these these are very, very top heavy. So they're very heavy at this end for some reason. Even though you've got a crankshaft up here, they're very, very heavy here. Um, obviously, you've got all the valves and the um, you know the uh, intake and um, suction delivery valves and all that kind of stuff so you've got a lot of stuff in there so I will admit this is new to me I've never I've never taken a pump apart before um, from what I've seen they're relatively straightforward I mean you can buy the service kits for them um, I've got all the service parts already uh, I've got new pistons I've got new suction delivery valves I've got new seals um, so pretty much it's going to be a complete overhaul of this pump uh, it's done about five years now, um, so it is, um, well, whether it is or whether it isn't, I'm not too sure on the amount of hours my hour meter decided to stop working, but I would say it's probably got around about 800 hours on it now, so it's, um, as I was stripping the washer down anyway, um, I thought it would be a, a good time to do some routine maintenance. You know, you don't want these things going pop on you. Right, so let's get into the nitty gritty. We're basically going to be taking this uh, this this brass section off here, so you can space it. Then you got to get to the, the the valves and the pistons. I will be taking obviously the uh, the, the seals. There's a, a seal on this side. I'm not too sure if it is leaking. Um, I I keep seeing a little bit of oil around there. I've got the seal anyway, so I've, as I've got it, I'm going to replace it. I'm going to basically strip the whole thing down, make sure it's all good inside. Uh, and then basically put it back together again with new o-rings, new seals, etc, etc. So right, let's get into it. Um, I'm going to pan you back just a little bit, just so I've got a little bit of room, because obviously as I'm working here, all you're going to be able to see is my hand and my elbow. So let's see if I can push you back there a little bit. Right, so you've got on top, you've got these, um, I believe these are called valve caps. Um, very expensive to replace for some reason. Now I've already pre um pre-cracked these off um, these were mega mega tight in fact I couldn't even I couldn't even break them off with a massive breaker bar that's how tight they were and I'm talking something like that uh, that's a big old jobby I couldn't break it off with that so I had to use a um, electric impact gun which obviously broke them off so um, these these are actually loose which is strange because there's nothing actually that that seals these they're just purely screw in um, so they are they were mega tight I mean obviously you don't want them leaking um, let's get one out very very they're quite fine threads obviously they're obviously solid they're not hollow that's obviously probably the reason why they're so expensive um, and you've got a which looks like some kind of um, seal plate in there so it's uh, So you can see these are these are solid so yeah you may need to crack them off I've, I've done them anyway um, so I've done all three of them I've already pre-drained the oil make it a little bit lighter not a lot um, got a few takeaway containers at the ready just some uh, just some small sort of foil things that you can buy um, just so I can put the parts in it so I'm not going to lose them So we're going to start by taking these off. I would imagine they would probably come in from the other side purely because it looks like there's an O-ring on the inside. 
um, and obviously these are threaded so if they come up this way you're obviously going to shred up the o-ring um, so we shall take them out I'll show you them in a minute I'll pull the camera up so you can see what's inside let me just I don't know if I can raise the camera excuse any shakiness for a minute we're going to be going up see if I can get a higher shot I don't know if it's going to be any easier looking down on this than it is at the side angle. It's uh, maybe a slightly better angle. So if I just tilt you forward, you can you can see what's inside there. Right, that should do ya. This is the main bit of the ring that we're uh, going to be working on at the moment. So basically to get your front, well, this is going to be what, the cylinder head. Use common terms that most people are going to know. So this is all brass, it's all cast brass. You will find obviously when these are brand new they're nice and shiny. And as they age they just go this kind of dull colour. <clears throat> Why does it always get beckoned by the little girl when I start working? Anyway, removing the cylinder head, we're going to have to undo these eight rather large Allen bolts. Um, they're going to be eight mil. If I no, that's a six. If I am right, they're going to be eight mil. Yeah, that's an eight mil. I'm not going to use this because you're going to swing on the end. Swinging on that. So. I shall get my trusty. Now I'm half expecting these to be a mm, bloody tight, if I'm honest. And I had all my gear out here yesterday and now I can't find anything. Which is typical. So let's see if we're gonna be able to break these loose with a No, they are tight. Cool, oh, they are really tight. Is it going to need some persuasion with a little bit of a hammer? Yes, I would. Similar to a car, I would do diagonals, just in case. Stop with a little bit of the warpage. Just crack them off. Obviously when you rebuild this you are going to need a torque wrench, one that you can rely on. If it costs you £3 off eBay, then it's probably going to be shit. So get yourself a reliable torque wrench. Halfords do sell some really good torque wrenches and they're not that expensive. I would expect that there is no oil in here. I'd say the oil is going to be contained in here. It's going to be just, if anything, probably a bit of water in here. one down there was a little bit tight so I might have to check the thread in that. Now 
Now I would imagine that these bolts are going to be high tensile steel. So you may have to be a little bit wary if you're considering replacing these um, either for new ones, either buy brand new ones from Interpump. So you can hear it squeaking. So you'd have to be a little bit careful on this one when you put it back in. Either chase it out with a thread, with a, a tap. You can feel it on there. So you will need to want to torque these back up. Let's just have a look on there. See what will happen on these is the threads can start to corrode and then obviously that can give you issues when removing it because these are only going to be um, zinc plated steel they're not going to be stainless very long though so you can probably buy replacement high tensile bolts see this one here's got that has got corrosion on it that see that corrosion on there obviously it's a is a pump, so it is used. It's used around water and, and obviously high heat. So a bit of corrosion is to be expected, but if you can buy high tensile um, replacements, obviously they're going to be they're big ones. They are they're serious size bolts. Obviously, you can get the part schematics for these on the interpump site. Uh, most of the companies that sell these, you can get the actual parts breakdown, so you can pretty much see where everything goes back together. Um, so that's it. We've basically we've got those eight bolts out of there. Um, I'm going to imagine there's going to be some kind of there might be a seal on there, there might be a gasket. Not too sure, um, but either way, this part's got to come off. Um, so you could give it a little bit of a tap. You can try and wiggle it, see if it come off. Little tap. Using a, a soft face hammer or a rubber hammer, don't go welting on it with a metal hammer because obviously this is brass and you'll probably end up just damaging it. And these are about 900 quid, so you don't really want to go. See a little gentle tap, and you can see, or if you can see, you can just start seeing it starting to break away. So just gently, gently, all over, top and bottom. Obviously what it's acting on is the pistons inside. Don't be tempted to put anything in here. There is, there's no gasket on there. So I mean, it probably won't make a great deal of difference, but just out of respect for your pump, don't go putting screwdrivers in here and levering on here um, because you could end up just taking chunks out, especially on this soft brass. I say it's not, it's not a sealed component. So you've not got, you know, potential of water coming out of here all the water stuff sort of contained sort of within this area here so it's not well if if there was then there'd, be, there'd be a gasket on it and there isn't so it's just gently gently wiggle wiggle you can start seeing it I just won't pan you around just gonna get you some better shot of this let's just readjust I've got a tarp holding on the floor to catch. So you can see it's coming apart. You can just see the white pistons in there. Let's see if I can come around this side. Give it a little gentle wiggle wiggle. You see the water coming out. Wiggle 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 and this should just come away in your hand. Just like that. Oh, that is heavy. Really heavy. So the pistons actually look pretty good. We'll get a closer look at them later. They're obviously ceramic pistons. Um, so obviously you're going to be looking for any kind of wear or scores in the, in the ceramic. Um, these pistons can be quite expensive. 
Um, but obviously it's quite it's um, quite a big job just to try and whip these out and put them and put a new set in because you've got to strip the whole wash down. So obviously if you are got got to this stage, um, you know I think. I can't remember what I paid for them, um, but I mean, if you look on, if you've got the genuine part numbers, you know, you'll find them. There are companies, obviously, you can sell them. You can buy them on eBay. I've got all my stuff from a chappie on eBay. He sells genuine into pump stuff. He's based in Italy, which is obviously where these are made. Um, he does them a lot cheaper than what you can get them for over here. Um, so obviously, whilst I was at it, I ordered up everything. I've got the new pistons. I've got new seals and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, let's just move you back round this side so you can get a better shot. So there you can see the the three pistons. And this is the bulk of her. Let's put that up. Let's see if we can get a better look at this. Christ! You wouldn't believe how heavy that is. Ugh. So these basically these should all pop out. These are just your your seals. So you can basically see um, there's a, a bush that obviously holds the seal in. That will just pop out. They're a bit um a bit greasy. Um, and obviously you've got other. Lots of water coming out at the moment. Let me see what else we've got in there. Now some of these they sell as kits, which are basically going to be what they class their service parts, and then any other parts that they're not deemed to be, we say regular service parts. You can buy them, um, just not in a dedicated kit. You'd have to source the individual part numbers. So this is obviously going to be. Um, the piston guide and seal there's uh, obviously a, a seal in there so that would kind of ride right in there I don't get any tools out on these I'm trying to use my fingers to be as gentle as possible Go. We've got a. I don't know the technical name for these. A beveled doodah. And up in there. Let's it's going to be where the the piston slides, and then you've got all your delivery valves up in there, up in yonder. So I'd imagine you would have to pull these bits out of the top. There are some threaded screw holes on the top. So I'd imagine you could put two little um, bolts or screws in there and just pull that out from the top. So let's have a little quick look at what I've got. This is basically all the um, service kit parts you can buy. got three new pistons with uh, six suction delivery valves so one would assume that there is two per cylinder and we have those angled jobbies so that's basically the replacement to these We have we have new seals which are going to be for the crankshaft and the crankshaft. We shall call them crankshaft seals. Yes, we will. And replacement ones of these, which is obviously that I took out the first thing I took out the uh, piston uh, seals. 
yeah probably so yeah that's them uh, yeah one for each um, some of the various seals and bits and pieces which obviously I'll yet to find I'm sure they'll be in there soon let's put the new stuff away That looks like a. That looks like one of those washers I've just seen in the kit. And what looks like a seal. I don't know if I've got a torch out here. I've got a UV, so you'll be able to see the. Looks like the suction delivery valves at the end. Let's put you on pause for a minute and I'll back in a minute. Right, had a little, uh, not a mini meltdown, but I needed to uh, ascertain exactly what was going on. Uh, like I said, I've never taken these apart before, so rather than seem, seem like a complete James Blunt on the camera, uh, I thought I'd just um, pause it, have a little look, so I know exactly what I'm talking about when I come back to you rather than spending half an hour gas, gassing and not knowing what the hell I'm doing. Right, so as you can see, I've taken um, I've taken the first um, piston valve uh, guide out, seal, whatever you want to call it, um, and I told you that there was these uh, little caps in the tops, and um, basically I wanted to get to the suction and delivery valves, because obviously I've got some new ones of those which are basically these, if you can see them, um, yeah, is that going to focus, so yeah, as you can see, they're not overly big, um, but there is, uh, there is six of them, three per cylinder, oh, sorry, two per cylinder, so you've got six, um, so yeah, so basically I was just trying to figure out how to get them out, uh, it took me a little bit of, um, a bit of jiggery-pokery, but I've done one, so I know what I'm doing, and I can now do. Um, I can now show you the others. Um, I don't know if this light is going to make any difference, but you can maybe out of see just. Oh, it's nice and clear in there now. But right, so this is what you got to do. So you've got your your piston seal um, here. So this just pulls out gently I've got your finger in it I'll try and avoid using tools there is um, seals and stuff on here um, they do say you can reuse o-rings um, problem with them is that when they go they go and they're pennies each you know so in in reality if you're taking all this apart you may as well just put new o-rings on it they don't come in the kit um, you have to buy them separately um, but yeah they're not that expensive they're normally nitrile um, o-rings if you want to stump up for some vitten ones you can they're probably about three or four times the price so you got that tapered cone jobby again as I'll call it and then in here I was right you've got a um, let's get me a little uh, you have got it's like a little um, it's a it's, oh, it's like a almost like a bronze washer it's like a bushing like a bushing washer it's got like a coating on it and then there is um, you probably can't see it uh, let's see if I can get this get the light on it but there is in there there is another seal and there is another um, like a Teflon PTFE type um, washer which is basically if I can get my kit it's basically gonna be these um, these parts here so you've got this um, plastic washer I would say it's probably going to be more like um, PTFE or Teflon Delrin, Delrin, whatever they call it maybe then you've got a seal and then you've got that new um, I'll say it's it looks like the bushings on the fork fork guides on a motorcycle if you have any idea what I'm talking about 
but it's like a like a Teflon coated bushing. So them three come in the kit, so they're going to be replaced. Um, so yeah, you can pick them out however, however you please. Obviously, this is not held in, but you know if you're not going to replace them, obviously don't go swinging on these because you will just knacker them up. But you would just try and lever them out. Don't oh, excuse me. Don't think. My tool is not going to, it's not going to grip the back. No, so there's a bit more jiggery pokery involved in that one. But you can just see in the back of there, if I can, if I can move you over, you can just see at the back. I don't know if it's going to focus in there. So you can just make out the uh, suction valve in the back. So, like I thought, you had these caps um, which were in the top and there are some threaded um, screw holes so you will need some small um, screws bolts whatever you got as long as they're long enough um, I don't know. here it is uh, these are just uh, posi I think they're M3s not M3s so basically just screw them in because this is what's going to come out and you can see you've got o-rings on here again and then obviously you've got a delivery valve under here with an o-ring and obviously you get that new o-ring in the kit so once you've got your screws on you can just wiggle 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 just pull it up gently and you should start to feel it move and actually pops. So that's that. All right, I'm going to lift you up a little bit. Oh, you can't really see what's in here. Let's. This is bloody heavy. Let's. Uh... Right there, let's see if we can get a bit of wood. Well, that ain't a bad shot right there, is it? So you can see inside there, we have got... Um, I don't know what it is. It is it's quite a... quite a serious machined piece. But again, it's got an O-ring on it. It looks like it's got some kind of... Um, split backup ring type um, again I've not these don't come in a kit um, but you can see on here where the rubber is sort of coming away a little bit so for the sake of whatever pence they are I'll just order up some new ones I'll say whenever you're doing these replacing the delivery valves is not normally part of a service kit um, again they're quite expensive but as you can see in there, we've got the top end of this. Um, and it could, because it's got that seal on it, it's got a threaded... Um, it's got a thread in the top, which is an M12 thread. Um, so obviously you're going to need... You might be lucky to be able to screw something in there and use it to pull it, but I basically used um, a balance, a harmonic balance puller, you know, for pulling off... Um, I don't know why they pull them pull off like flywheels and stuff. Um, just so you, when you pull it out, you're pulling it out square. Um, but that will basically just screw into here, as I've found. So just screw it in as far as as far as you can. You may be lucky that you can you can wiggle it and pull it, but I found it to be really really tight. So what I basically done is I put the the balance of foot on M12 washer. You can buy this stud, some washers, and they come with these um, like stud connectors. You can buy where I get it from. I got it from Wix. These are M12 by 160 pre-cut studs, uh, so they come from Wix. If you're interested, if you want to go out and buy the whole kit, 
obviously you've got to have your, your balancer is separate. This is pre-cut they say, but it's quite tight. Once you get it over you should be alright. It worked fine the first one. Why is that so bloody tight now? and that stud's got really tight. There we go, so thread it all the way down. And I, the last one I managed to do just by hand. So once you start pulling. Like so. There is again, there is an O-ring on there which you can pick out before you start pulling on it. Because you can see on here, it's actually taken a nice big chunk out of the O-ring where it's passed the seal. So that will need to be replaced. It's got bits missing out of it, but I'll replace half. You can see that it's starting to when you put when it's come out. There's um, obviously where each of these cylinders are joined chambers as it pulls across there it catches and it starts to shred the o-ring so if you put them back in you could be in for a bit of trouble so let's do the final one and you can see right at the bottom you may need needle nose pliers but right at the bottom there is a, a um, that be a suction valve there is an o-ring on the end of it as well so as you wiggle, wiggle, you pull it out, you notice it comes out without the O-ring. So if you've got a little pick, go in there with your pick and pull the O-ring out. Don't want to be doubling up on your O-rings. So, put these in. I've threaded them in as pretty much as far as they're going to go. Wiggle, wiggle. They are tight. This one's really tight. Just ease that out. And there's the third one, complete with the, the uh, that'll be your delivery valve. So this time, these O-rings in here, they are quite tight in here. I had to get two, two picks, and by the time you've kind of gouged this out, you've probably knackered the O-ring anyway. So I so say O-rings are cheap as chips, you know. If you buy them from Interpump, you might pay more for them, but they're all the same. They're all going to be nitrile or is it a EDPM or whatever they call it. They certainly aren't going to be Vitten. If they were Vitten, you'd probably pay about £4 or something each for these. But you could put Vitten ones in, if you so wish. So final time on that one. out so I'll pop that in there screw it in there's not much turn on it you're only going to get about two and a half turns so there's not a lot of um there's not a lot to play with on that that's me spanner let's do it let's do it like this so you can kind of see oh that one's easy that one's pulled straight out because I took the O-ring out. But you can see there's bits on your fingers. So obviously when you go to put these back together again, you're gonna wanna um, you're gonna wanna give them a good old clean up before you put them back in. 
and then finally in you go with your long nose again no o-ring to go dig in for it it's quite actually a straightforward operation if you've got the tools so it's quite quite handy if you're watching this video you get an idea of what tools you will need because um, obviously I mean I've got the stuff out here because I'm a ex motorcycle engineer so I've got plenty of tools at my disposal um, but obviously there's no, nothing worse than starting a job and realizing you don't actually have the correct tools uh, I don't think you get about to see inside inside here very well but I do happen to have an endoscope so I'm going to go indoors now and hook it up to the computer and see if I can get any kind of clear pictures, not a particularly great endoscope, see if I can get any clear pictures or anything of actually what's inside there so you can get a better view. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. So this is still beastly heavy. I know it's obviously solid brass. So, um, I don't know if it's going to give a... It's a bit... bit wonky on there but here we go for the last one if I can get this out obviously they are going to be tight because you don't want them leaking this one might have a little bit of persuasion these are getting replaced anyway so it doesn't really matter but obviously I mean in fairness if you're going to get this far you're not going to replace all this stuff then I don't know why you're bothering doing it Now, I'm not too sure what you'll pay, a, um, pay someone to do this for you. Not too sure. You're probably looking at a couple of hours in labour, I'd imagine. Plus your parts. Now, obviously, into pump parts, they're not cheap at all. I think most of them parts I showed you earlier on come to about 300 quid. But obviously, this is a big pump. So, obviously, different pumps use different different parts and if you went on to winter pump this one's been a bugger if you went on to winter pump you'll see exactly what kits you need for your specific washer I don't know this one's been so tight it won't come out with bloody fingers Typical on the last one I'm showing you, it's been an absolute bastard to come out. Yeah, one's come out with me sodding fingers. That's it, I'll get behind the seal. That's that. So you can see, obviously, brass does tarnish over time. That's that. Here is the tapered jobby. That's now what's going to be known as its official term. See, it's pretty, pretty gunky. I don't know why it's, why it's so gunky. It has done a few years for me now. So, and yes, so now we'll figure out a way how to get that seal out in there you can see my finger in there so obviously what you might want to do once you've got all the seals out and everything give it a good old wash um, I mean don't put anything sort of chemical related through it but give it a good wash with um, I don't know use your wife's sink maybe um, give it a wash maybe an old toothbrush uh, give it a good clean out and um, obviously these are the, the there's actually like piston I don't know what they are, but that's what the, the pistons basically slide in and out up there, which obviously suck and push the water in and out. So yeah, apart from them seals in there, which I'm going to need a little bit of poking with, um, that's pretty much it on the top. Uh, I'm going to um, put this aside, and then I'll come back in a bit, and then we'll, we can start stripping down this main pump. Service-wise, 
this is about as deep into the pump as normally you'd need to go you wouldn't need to go much much further than that um, obviously if you're replacing crank seals then obviously then you do need to start stripping out the inside um, but hell I like to see how things work so um, I'm going to strip this base down completely um, I'll be back shortly we shall call it hmm, pump part two shall we right cheerio just thought I'd add a quick um, note to the end of the, the, uh, the video um, I was having a quick look at the parts schematic and I noticed an extra couple of um, o-rings that I couldn't figure out on the um, in the actual manifold I don't know if you can make out any of this this is the part schematic for the pump and right at the bottom here number uh, three four and five I couldn't quite work out where it was so I had a little dig um, and there is actually uh, another piece um, it looks looks like that um, it's got a, an o-ring and a um, uh, a ring um, expansion ring around it now obviously you don't have to remove these but again they've got the m12 um, it's got an m12 thread cut into it so very similar to the other um, um, the top piece where I had to use the puller um, I simply used the same method to pull this out uh, which obviously you can just screw straight in uh, and then obviously using the puller or maybe by hand you could you could pop this out um, just worth noting obviously if you are changing all the rings and seals um, I priced up some of the bits and pieces and to be fair the o-rings and the seals they're, they're sort of pennies each anything from sort of 26 pence upwards um, I did look at buying some you know on our favorite eBay auction site um, but to be honest unless you're buying them in bulk um, sort of talking 25 o-rings upwards they don't really tend to work out much cheaper um, and considering o-rings have got a shelf life on them they've only normally got a shelf life of about three to five years so in reality by the time you want to come and use them they're probably going to be past their cure their um their use date um, because they start to harden up so in fairness because they're only a few pence each nord them directly from interpump 